Hi, it's uh, Damien Rowland from EM3. Uh, this week, uh, we're looking at sepsis as part of our department's uh, ED sepsis week. Uh, it's called SOS6. Um, so I'm here with... Me, Rachel Rowlands. I'm one of the PTD consultants at Leicester that works with Damien. And we're going to be talking just over the next five minutes about sepsis in children. Why is this important? Well, the problem with sepsis in children is you need to think sepsis to beat sepsis. And loads and loads of children present. Um, and if you've not thought of sepsis at the beginning of their uh, presentation to hospital, they could really end up with suboptimal treatments or indeed outcomes. And even if you do think of sepsis, sometimes we, we under treat or don't react quickly enough. And that can still lead to suboptimal treatments and outcomes. So this presentation is a bit about being on the ball and making sure that we are doing the best for all children who present with sepsis. So for those of you who deal predominantly with adults or uh, are not used to dealing regularly with, with children, um, it's impossible, important that you know your customer. And what I mean by that is that children present sometimes in different ways with sepsis than they do in adults. The obvious thing to say is that loads and loads of children present to urgent care emergency care or, or GP environments with a fever and very few of those children presenting with fever actually have true sepsis or a bacterial infection. So you have to be aware of that. There's also lots of myths about kind of the height of the temperature predicting a, a degree of, of sepsis or septicemia. Um, it doesn't really matter if your temperature is 38.5 or 39 or 39.5. You, you need to be thinking of sepsis in any of those types of children. Um, the other thing to, to think about is actually what information you're going to get from a child. You don't always get a history from them, so you're taking that third hand. Please always listen to the parents and, and believe what they say. They know their child best, and if they think their child's not quite right, invariably their child isn't quite right. Uh, and the last thing to say is that sometimes it's difficult to examine children, maybe in the way that you'd examine a, uh, an adult. Um, you must make sure that you've examined all parts of the child. So you need to strip them off completely, especially if they're, they're young, to, to look for rashes. And make sure that you've had a good look in the throat and the ears, because that can give you kind of the clues to other forms of infections that are there. So in kids, it's important to realise there's certain children who are at more high risk of sepsis than others. And the immediate ones that spring to mind are the very, very young. So any baby who's less than three months old who presents with a fever or with a low temperature, and especially those less than six weeks, you need to be thinking of a reason not to fully septic screen them and look for sources of sepsis. The other thing to remember is that just in the fact that they've been born, children have potentially been exposed to infections in the mum. So you need to ask a full birth history. Were there prolonged rupture of membranes? Were there any problems with the delivery? And did the baby end up on the neonatal unit needing antibiotics? Just because a child's been on neonates and treated with antibiotics for a couple of days doesn't mean that they're completely free of risk of sepsis later on in their, in their um, neonatal period. So always ask about this. You also need to find out, is the child immunised? Not everybody immunises their kids these days, so it's important to get a full immunisation history and not just assume that the child will have had their jabs. The other thing to remember is that kids do travel and you need to take a travel history. Just because they're only three months old doesn't mean that they haven't travelled to parts of the world that you and I might have not had the opportunity to go to, especially in the UK, given that we live in such a multicultural society. So, as I said, the important things to think about are, are they less than three months old and do they have a fever? Has there been any neonatal history? And ask specifically about maternal swabs. Mums will know if they've had group B strep picked up during pregnancy. And the other thing that's really important to ask about is feeding, because babies, when they're unwell, don't feed well. So ask the mum, is the baby feeding properly or have they noticed any change in the feeding pattern? So beware of high-risk presentations in small, small babies. 
When you've taken your history, the next thing to look at is actually the risks of the physiology and observations of the child themselves. Here in Leicester, we use something called the POPs system, um, and that just breaks down some of the physiological parameters and observations into a, a meaningful score that we can assign a risk to that child. But you, you'll have something locally. The important thing, though, to remember is please, you must do heart rates, breathing rates, temperatures, uh, do a overall description of how the child looks to you. Do they, do they look really unwell? Um, are they miserable versus being irritable? These are all really important things. This information is always available. So use it and utilize it to identify sepsis. So what have we done in Leicester to try and improve how we treat sepsis in small babies and children? Well, what we tend to use in Resus is a grab box system, and we already have these in place for children who come in with breathing problems, who come in with seizures, or who come in with anaphylaxis. So it's a system that we're all comfortable with. And because of that, what we've decided to do is bring in a sepsis box. Now, this is based loosely on the paediatric sepsis 6, which has been um, developed by Jez Tong, who's now one of our ITU consultants here in Leicester, working in the paediatric intensive care unit. On the front of the box, you've got things to look out for, um, which would make you concerned that a child might be septic. And it then gives you a list of the actions to take within the first hour. Inside the box is our local antibiotic um, guideline and a list of all the dosages of the antibiotics that you need to give. There's also a vial of each antibiotic you need and instructions for the nurses on how to draw these up. The hope is that this will speed up our time of getting antibiotics in when we identify sick children in recess or in the paediatric a &E department. Excellent. So thank you very much for, for listening. There's loads of people working on sepsis at the, at the moment. Uh, look out for, for Ron Daniels and the, the UK Sepsis Trust. They're doing fantastic work at promoting the utilisation of the sepsis six. Uh, Rachel's also mentioned Jez Tong, who's leading on the, the paediatric sepsis six. Um, and look out for a nice guideline on sepsis that's currently being developed. And the final thing to say is obviously if you do all this and you decide that the child isn't septic and they're safe to go home, make sure you give clear safety netting device, advice for all children with a fever who you send home from the department. In Leicester, we have a patient information leaflet that we've developed, which is based on the NICE guidance for fever and under fives. And um, most departments should have one of these. And if you don't, it's, um, it's easy to copy from the NICE guideline sites um, and make sure you document you've given some written and verbal advice to parents so that they know when to come back should their child deteriorate. Thanks very much for listening. Thanks for listening. Speak to you soon. Bye.